It used to be being an FPGA engineer meant you had to know a lot of stuff about programming a field programmable gate array. Well, Netcope has done something amazing. They've made it so that someone who knows kind of a variation of Python can actually program these. Lucas, why don't we talk about the implications of that on the telecom sector and what you're demonstrating here today. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, well, I'm from Netcope Technologies, as you mentioned, and uh, what we're trying to do here is uh, we're trying to open up the possibility of uh, programming uh, the FPGAs for a wider audience. What we've done is uh, we've created a compilator which takes um, a language called P4 where you can uh, describe the packet processing and uh, our compilator translates that language into VHDL which is the language uh, that you um, uh, describing what to do for the FPGAs. Um, essentially what it means uh, for future and for, for the telcos and ISPs uh, in terms of virtualization is that uh, our cards are able to, to work as a different applications um, every day or every hour, uh, depends on what you need. With a P4 support, um, network administrators without the need of uh, needing to know the Verilog or a v uh, sorry, not Verilog, VHDL language, uh, are able to describe their own problem and to solve it with uh, translating into VHDL and running on FPG card. This is all done on 100 gigabits, so even if you've got the fastest network, you're still able to process that. Yeah, so for instance, you could take this device here and it could be a firewall, it could be a router, it, it could be whatever that recipe is, right? Yeah, quite right. As, as you mentioned, you know, it can be whatever you like to be. Um, it's uh, only restricted to the P4 language and uh, the P4 language is still evolving, it's still growing, it's a relatively new language but we've, we've already seen that uh, it's got a huge potential. Um, you're able to to define a lot of things, so I think in a future it's got a great potential. And so with that, it, you can kind of have this library of functions, I suppose, and then those libraries, you can then program these. How long does that programming take to actually, you know, once you have a function, to change this device from one thing to another? Yeah. Um, you know, it depends how good you are in P4 language, I guess. So once you have this all set up in, in your uh, P4, then our compilator uh, takes a couple of hours uh, co to compilate everything into VHDL. And then, uh, you know, running the, the firmware onto our cards is just a matter of uh, minutes to up, up, update that firmware. So uh, you can also do it remotely. You know, um, you can uh, be sent the firmware and then you just load it onto the card. So um, you, you can have some expert which works on the P4, then translates it uh, with our compiler to VHDL, send, sends it to other guy who runs uh, at the data center or somewhere, and he does the update. So, you know, there's, there is various, various things which really ease up the process of, of uh, being dependent on, on the big boxes. Well, in the compiled uh programs uh, that you do, those can just live on a server somewhere, I assume, so then you could literally take them and, and recreate things, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's correct. And so from a commodity standpoint, what you're looking at are, are boards that are out there available today running on standard hardware, right? Yeah, it's just a commodity hardware running on uh, Intel architecture and uh, PCI Express bus. So anyone with uh, commodity hardware can uh, run our our cards, whether it's a big server or a small chassis. You can you can run our cards on it. In this particular demo, uh, want you to talk about that. Yeah, w what we've got here is uh, we're um, trying to um, showcase the P4 capability. Uh, what we have here is one card is uh, uh, functioning as a traffic generator. Uh, it sends 100 gigabit uh, traffic onto the second card, which have the P4 uh, application loaded onto. Not P4 application, but the P4 application that's been written in P4 language and translated into the VHDL. Uh, that runs on the card. And here we are adding um, a VLAN tag onto a specific uh, IP address. And then we're sending it to, to back to the card, which is uh, tran transceiving the signal, it's receiving it as well. And uh, it also uh, functions as a filter. So we're able to actually demonstrate that the IP address that we've selected has the uh, VLAN tag added. 
and so from a, a operational standpoint an advantage to this is that you could repurpose hardware without actually having to do anything physically right that's correct you know you're you're able to do it everything remotely just uh, sitting by the computer you don't need to go anywhere you don't need to unplug anything plug anything restart anything you just do it and the advantage to the FPGA is it's much, uh, I guess, more efficient. You can do much more with it than, say, a CPU or even a GPU. Yeah, that, that, that's correct. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, today the software and the CPUs are not that powerful to be able to, to process the, the big data. So our idea is to, to help out. So we're, you know, we're taking the big data, we're doing the trivial things, the filtering, the... Uh, the pre-processing and then um, we're sent uh, the traffic to CPU where they can do the important stuff. In this available today, I mean, you can start uh, programming these? Uh yeah, we have uh, several use cases uh, with a compiler that uh, we can translate uh, today. And obviously we're working on, on different use cases. The P4 language is still evolving. So, um, you know, if anyone is thinking, oh, I might have an application with P4, can you guys do it uh, as in touch and uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Excellent. Well, Lucas, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you.